We're so glad you're here today. Turn to neighbor and say, you sat by the right person. Turn to the neighbor you just ignored and say, you did too. And we're so excited today as we continue in our series talking about the family. And like they said, uh, last week was our Fresh Wind Services, our Spiritual Emphasis Week. And I encourage you, if you missed them, go back and listen to them. Pastor Scotty and his whole family were here, and it was such a blessing to have them here this last week. And it's just been a great series as we've been going through the family. And Maybe you're saying today, well, this series is good, but this series doesn't really apply to me. Maybe you haven't had a family. Maybe you have, uh, your kids have grown and they're gone and you're like, it's just me now. Or maybe you're saying, man, I'm a teenager. I'm, I'm just trying to get through math class. I'm not even ready to start thinking about a family. But I want you to know that, that this series can be very impactful, that as we start to plan and as we look ahead, and, and I, I heard, for, to encourage some of the younger people, I heard that somebody last week was saying, man, I wish I had heard this 30 years ago before I had started raising a family, that if you're looking ahead, that this can be a good plan and a good way to start looking ahead. But I believe that the God we serve wants to speak to you today. I believe that the God we serve, that, that he wants to speak directly to you, that maybe it's through something I'm gonna say or maybe the Holy Spirit is just gonna begin to whisper something in your ear that he has something for you today. Aren't you thankful today that the God we serve wants to talk to you directly? That he's got something that he specifically wants to share with you that the God we serve today is alive and he is still speaking. I know for me uh, and my family, this series has been great because we're in it right now. If you don't know me, I'm Pastor Zach, and my wife Marin was leading worship up here just a few minutes ago, and we have three boys, six, four, and two are the ages, so pray for us, okay? We need all the prayer we can get. It is chaos at our house just about all the time, a lot of wrestling, a lot of fighting, and that's just, that's just the morning time. Like, it's, it's crazy at our house, but that's our family, and, and today as we continue the series on the family, if you're taking notes this morning, I wanna look at the godly family. Say the godly family. The godly family. So as I was preparing to preach today, I did what anybody would do as they start preparing, and I searched Google, what is a godly family? <laughs> because apparently Google knows what it's talking about. And I was, I was kind of interested, like what is Google going to say about this? Like what does the world say a godly family is. And this is the definition that Google actually gave me. A godly family is one that follows God's principles and is led by parents who have the Holy Spirit dwelling in them. That's pretty good answer from Google, come on. That's not too bad. I was like, all right, Google, we're getting somewhere here. A godly family is one that follows God's principles. How many know that the Bible is not just a storybook to read, but it's, it's a playbook for our life today? It's the map for our journey, that, that those stories we read in this Bible, they aren't just stories to, to read about. It's not just a history book, but it is alive and it is speaking today. And the things that the Bible says, they are for our life today. That God's principles will direct us and God's principles will keep us safe and God's principles will guide us. A godly family is one that follows God's principles principles, one that is led by parents, led by the parents, not led by the teachers, not led by the pastors, not led by social media, not led by sports schedules, led by parents, I love this, who have the Holy Spirit dwelling in them. If you've said yes to Jesus, you have access to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit inside of us is, is what changes everything. He wants to speak to you, he wants to guide you, he wants to direct you. Jesus said when he was here on this earth, it's better that I go, I'm sending you someone who is better. Better than Jesus. He said that the Holy Spirit inside of you is even better than Jesus beside you. He says you're gonna do greater things than the things that I did because of Holy Spirit. And I wanna ask you a question this morning, are you accessing the Holy Spirit in your life? Because he will change everything. He will guide you and he will direct you. We're talking about that God wants to speak to you today. This is how God speaks and you have access to the Holy Spirit every day. You don't just have access when you walk in on a Sunday morning, but you have access as you walk out. As you get in your car, as you're at work, as you're at school, that the Holy Spirit is there with you wherever you go. So I started praying and I was just, Asking God, God direct me, like there's so many examples in the Bible that I could use when talking about a godly family. And I landed on one family that I felt was, was a, a great example for us to use this morning. So if you have your Bibles, come on, go ahead and turn to Genesis chapter six. 
Genesis chapter 6. We're getting excited about the Word of God this morning. And while you're turning to Genesis chapter 6, I want to intro this person in the New Testament in Hebrews chapter 11. Go ahead and put that verse on. It says, by faith, Noah. Someone say Noah. Come on, say Noah. Noah, when warned about things not yet seen in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with the faith. This morning, we're going to talk about Noah and Noah's family, and we're going to be in Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, and we're going to start in verse 5. It says, The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. Verse 8, but Noah, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Let's pray. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you are speaking today. I thank you that you've given us access to the Holy Spirit, and I pray that you would speak directly to us this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning, I want to give you four things. Say four things. Four things that we see from Noah that give us a, a playbook, that give us an outline for how to have a godly family. And here in just a few minutes, I'm going to ask you to respond. A response that is just an outward expression of an inward decision saying, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That says, I, I'm going to raise a godly family. I'm going to be a godly family. I am declaring that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So four things that we see from Noah that give us the playbook for a godly life. The first is it says Noah was found righteous and blameless. Righteous and blameless. What a definition for someone to be known as righteous and blameless. This is the first time we see righteous used in the Bible, and it's being used to describe Noah. Now, it's important that we know today the only righteousness that God receives is the righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, his son. And the only way that we can step into that is by admitting our sin, declaring that Jesus is Lord, and following him and having faith that he will save us. But what we see is that Noah was righteous before God, and because Noah was righteous before God, he was blameless before man. If you are righteous before God, you'll be blameless before man. Now, blameless doesn't mean that he was sinless. We know Jesus was the only one who was sinless. But what this means by blameless is Noah was a man of high integrity. That Noah was a man that his neighbors and people around couldn't find fault with him. This was who Noah was. He was righteous and he was blameless. And it says that, that he lived in a time where every person in the world was wicked. Every person was sinful. It says that God regretted creating humans. Every single person except Noah's family. What a good example of a godly family to see that when the whole world is sinful, Noah's still found righteous. Noah's still found blameless. So how in a, in a sinful world, how in a wicked world could someone still be found righteous and blameless? And it's this, it's Noah's walk. We see that Noah walked with God. Noah walked with God. He was the only one walking with God. He was the only one in that walk with God. The whole world had one view and Noah had a different view. The whole world agreed on certain things and Noah agreed on his own things, that, that him and God were, were walking together. God was speaking to Noah. God was talking to Noah. Noah, the, the whole world acted one way and he acted another way. The whole world was doing certain things and Noah wasn't doing any of those things. Noah was not popular with the world. Can I tell you this morning that if you'll be found righteous and blameless, you're not gonna be popular. Right. Noah said, it doesn't matter if I'm popular. I don't wanna be popular with the world because the world's not popular with God. Noah was righteous. Noah was blameless. Noah was a man of righteousness among wicked people. And maybe today you kind of feel that way. Like, the, the, it, it doesn't take long of looking around and scrolling the phone and watching TV to find that we live in a wicked world. Today, maybe you find it's easy to be a follower of Jesus. You look around, everybody here agrees on the same thing, and even if they don't, they're going to fake it this morning. But tomorrow when you go to work, tomorrow when you go to school, 
Maybe you feel like I'm the only one. Everybody else looks one way and talks one way and acts, and I act a different way. I conduct business a a different way than, than everybody else. Noah was this man that the whole world did one thing and he did another. He was found righteous and he was found blameless because of his walk. I wanna ask you this morning, are you walking with God? Are we in, in constant uh, a walk, in a constant journey with God? Are we not just asking God to, to go on our walk, but are we going on a walk with God? It's hard today to live a, a Christian life. It's hard today to walk it out. Why? Because we live in a post-Christian era in the United States. Many of you can probably remember a time when even if you weren't a Christian, you, you recognized the Christian values and you respected those values and those were, those were held to a high priority, those were held to a high standard, but today, that's not the case. Today, the Christian values are not the norm and probably the more you walk with God, the less like the world you will look. Are we walking with God? Noah was walking so close to God that he could hear when God would speak. Like I said, God wants to speak to you today. But I believe that we have to give space for that. We have to give opportunity for that. I think too often maybe in in prayer lives, our our prayer life looks a lot like us talking to God but not us listening to God. God wants to speak to you and we see that that God spoke to Noah, picking up in, in verse 11. It says, now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth, so make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat coat it with pitch inside and out. God says, I'm going to destroy the whole world. God speaks this to Noah. Can I tell you this morning that the more you walk with God, the more God's gonna speak to you, and what you'll find is that at some point, God's gonna speak something to you that seems a little bit crazy. That seems a little bit, like, I, that seems wild, and get ready because God's about to do something big. God's about to do something big, and God speaks this to Noah. God says, I am going to destroy the whole world, so I need you to build an ark. He says, I need you to build an ark that's 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet tall. There's a picture of what the ark could have looked like at this time. That is a massive construction project. God said, I need you to build this. And Noah spends 120 years building the ark. 120, 120 years building the ark. And I love what verse 22 says. It says, Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Noah did what? He did what? Kind of as God commanded him. No, Noah did what? Everything just as God commanded him. Noah was obedient. If we wanna have a godly family, we need to be righteous and blameless, and we need to work to have obedience to God. That when God says something, that we do everything just as God has commanded. James tells us to not just listen to the word, but to do it, to do everything. To do what? Everything just as God commands. This is a extreme act of obedience. God tells him to build this ark and he does every single thing. Noah is very obedient to God. He doesn't just do most of what God told him to do, he does everything. Why, because partial obedience is still disobedience. It's like if I were to tell my oldest son, Barrett, Barrett, I need you to clean your room. Barrett could go up to his room, he could mop the floors, scrub the walls, dust the whole room, put new sheets on his bed, clean the windows, refold all the clothes, steam all the clothes in the closet, but if there's still a pile of dirty clothes, he didn't fully obey what I asked him to do. That's still disobedience. And I wonder how often this is how we treat God. God calls us to do something, God tells us what to do, and we do most of it, but there's still that little corner that we don't fully obey in. I think there's many full-grown, full-grown Christians who are treating God like, they're, like they are a toddler. Like imagine if, if God told Noah, Noah, I want you to build this ark. Noah goes, okay, yeah, I'm gonna wait till, wait till I have enough money. No, Noah, I want you to build the ark. No, one, 
Noah, Noah two, no, I'm gonna count to three if you don't build the ark. You're gonna know one. And I think this is often how we treat God. But how many know that delayed obedience, guess what? Disobedience. Come on, I wanna be someone who's obedient to God, that if God says something, I do everything just as God has commanded. If we wanna have godly families, when God speaks to us, we need to do everything just as God commands. That ark, there's a lot of wood. Every time, jo- every time Noah went to cut down a tree, he's doing everything just as God. Every time it's an act of obedience. Every day, and I can only imagine, I don't know this for sure, but I can only imagine that 120 years, there's gotta be days where he's waking up going, ah, oh, I don't know if I can do this today. I don't know if I wanna go cut down another tree, but every day he is obedient. Every day he goes out and he works. We see Noah was walking with God, Noah was working for God, and in Second Peter, it makes a reference saying that Noah was a man who preached righteousness. Noah was walking, he was working, he was witnessing. His character was a witness. He was going out and he was, he was witnessing. Now his sermon didn't take much prep. He just went around saying, hey, it's gonna rain. <laughs> it's gonna rain, get ready. It's gonna rain, what's rain? I don't know, but it's gonna happen. You better get ready. It's gonna rain, it's gonna rain. He preached, his obedience was very bold. Come on, can we be Christians who have bold obedience? Can we be Christians that are bold in our faith? Can we be Christians who are bold and when God tells me something, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna walk it out, I'm gonna act out. Can we be people who are bold? I see a world who gets bold about a lot of things. There's a lot of stickers people wear, stickers they put on their car, hats that they wear, shirts they wear, signs that they put in front of their yard, posts that they make on social media all about who they're gonna vote for. But come on, can we be more bold about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? I wanna be someone who's more bold in my praise than I am in my politics. I wanna be someone who is known, known for the bold obedience like Noah had. Noah was bold. Noah said, if God said this, I'm gonna do everything just as God has commanded. He was very bold in his obedience. I heard this, this question asked, and I wanna ask you this question this morning that I want you just to think about for a moment. If you were arrested and charged with being a follower of Jesus, would the evidence against you say that you're guilty or that you are innocent of all charges? Come on, are we people who are gonna be bold in our faith? I hope that I'm someone that's so bold in my obedience, that's so bold in my faith, that's so bold in in righteousness and and being blameless, that, that the evidence is so strong against me that I'm a follower of Jesus. We see that if we wanna have a godly family, it's, it's about being righteous and blameless. It's about being obedient. And number three, it's about our faith and our trust in God. Hebrews 11, I, I read to begin with, it says, by faith, Noah. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, he built an ark to save his family. Building this ark was an act of profound faith. There was no evidence that was telling him that yeah, the weather, it looks like it's actually about to, to rain here. There was no evidence that that, that was gonna happen. It was, it was by faith Noah built the ark. By faith, he said, I, God spoke this to me. It doesn't look like it's gonna happen. By faith, year one, year 10, year 60, year 80, year 100. By faith, he continued to build. By faith. Come on, I hope that there are some people in the room today that your faith begins to rise up. As I was praying for this week, I felt that there are some people here that have yet to fully trust God that have yet to fully put their faith in God, that maybe you've been fighting the battles, that maybe you've been trying to figure it all out on your own, and today God's saying, would you just trust me? Would you not fight the battle? Would you just face it and allow me to do the work? Would you just trust me? There are some people today that I believe that, that you've had faith in the past for things, and maybe that faith has dwindled, but today God wants to rekindle that faith, that faith for that grandchild, that faith for that thing that seems impossible, for that healing, Noah is a man of of great faith. He is in the hall of faith. By faith, he built an ark to save his family. Noah said, there's these seven other people in my family. I'm not gonna let them see God speak something to me and me not walk it out in faith. He said, I'm gonna build this ark to save my family. I believe God's asking today, are there some people in the room that are willing to have faith to build an ark to save your family? 
Are you willing to build an ark to save your, what does that look like today? Man, I believe that what our world is in desperate need of today is some godly men, some fathers who say, I'm gonna build an ark to save my family. Some fathers who say, I'm not just gonna send my family to church, I'm gonna lead my family to church. Some fathers that say, when my kids have a Bible question, I'm not gonna send them to their mom or to the pastor or to their small group leader. I'm gonna look in the Bible and I'm gonna find the answer for myself. I'm gonna lead my family. Some fathers who say, I'm not gonna allow the world and social media and the schools and celebrities to tell my kids about sexuality. I might have an uncomfortable conversation, but I'm gonna make sure they know what the Bible says and the biblical boundaries that God has given us in that. Some fathers who say, I'm not gonna give morals that my kids should follow and not follow them myself. I'm gonna lead them in that. He built an ark to save his family. He, he led his family by faith. Noah, Noah's faith saved his family. Faith that says, if God said this, I'm gonna walk it out. Faith that says, I'm gonna trust God in this. Think about this whole thing. God tells Noah, I need you to build an ark. He tells him how to build the ark. He says, I'm, you're gonna have a bunch of animals on the ark. He doesn't tell him how to round up the animals. Like you think Noah's going like, so do I need to get like a lasso or like cages to trap it? Like what do I need to do? Like you're, you're about to put my whole family on this ark, God, this boat, it's gonna be beautiful. You haven't yet told me how to navigate the boat yet, God. We're about to be locked up on this boat. Should we hire a chef or like what's the, what's the plan here? But Noah had faith. Noah said, this is what God told me to do and I'm gonna trust him for the rest of the way. I'm gonna do what he told me to do and trust that he's gonna come alongside me. And then all of a sudden one day, the rain starts to fall. And one day, the first rain dropped. One day the rain, it starts coming. In one day, Noah was right and all of civilization was wrong. In one day, Noah was saved and the whole world was condemned. The Bible says one day Jesus is going to return. Matthew 24 it makes reference to this. It says, when the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. One day, we don't know when that day is coming, but we know the day is coming, that there's gonna be one day, and we're gonna have faith, and we're gonna trust that I'm gonna do my part, and I'm trusting that God's gonna come back. By faith, Noah did this. Noah trusted God, and, and he stepped out, he built the ark, and he saved his family. To have a godly family, it's to be righteous and blameless. It's to be obedient. It's to have faith. It's, it's to trust God. And number four, it's to have holy fear. Holy fear. Look at what it says in Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. In holy fear, he did this. Our staff has been going through this book, The Awe of God, by John Bevere, if you have never read this book, I encourage you, highly recommend this book to go through. And it, it gives a great outline of what holy fear looks like. And this last week in, in the reading, one of the stories that the, the, the author was writing about was this, this person who used to be in ministry and it was this famous pastor and televangelist and this person who had then be, been found guilty and arrested and, and had all these charges and Basically was found that for years and years and years was sinning and breaking the law and doing all of these things. And, and this, this author had the opportunity to meet with him and talk with him. And he asked him, when did you fall out of love with Jesus? Like I, I saw the ministry at the beginning. It was very clear your love for God. And it was very clear your passion for him. But when did you fall out of love for Jesus? And this man said, I never fell out of love Jesus, I just stopped fearing God. I think too often there's been a, a gospel that gets preached that's all you need is Jesus' love. Now hear me, holy fear isn't being scared of God, it's being afraid of being apart from God. Holy fear is recognizing that, that my God is so holy and so perfect that sin separates me from him. And I don't wanna be, a, I don't wanna be apart from my God. Therefore, I have a fear of that. Therefore, I don't wanna go those places. I don't wanna do those things. We need to not just be okay with the love of Jesus. Yes, the love of Jesus is real and it, it covers your sin, but we need to be people who have holy fear saying, I wanna be as close to God as I can be. 
If you wanna be a godly family, we gotta have holy fear. We can't just settle in, in the normal mundane things of life and just settle into things being okay, but we need to have a holy fear. We need to constantly be checking, am I right with God? Is there things in my life that are separating me from God? Noah, was a, he led a godly family because Noah had holy fear. It's a godly family. Noah was righteous, Noah was blameless. He was obedient, he, he had faith and he trusted God and Noah had holy fear. Would you stand with me all across the room this morning? I believe this morning that God's speaking to people in the room about raising a godly family, about deciding that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Deciding that Someday I'm gonna grow up and I'm gonna raise a family and that family is gonna be a godly family. Deciding that my kids right now, I'm gonna decide that from this moment on, we're gonna be a godly family. For some people in the room, I believe God's asking you today to stand in the gap, that you might be the only person in your family here this morning. God's saying, would you stand in the gap for your kids and your grandkids that have fallen away, declaring that, that from this moment on, I'm gonna do what I can to make this, sure this family is a godly family. In just a moment, I'm gonna invite you to respond as just an outward expression of an inward decision. As for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. That like Noah, the world might look one way, but we're gonna be another way. Might not be popular with the world, but we're gonna be popular with God. Before I do that, if you would bow your head and close your eyes, maybe today you have yet to say yes to Jesus. The righteousness that we can receive in Jesus, that Jesus came and he died for my sin. That if I had admit my sin and if I declare that he's Lord, that, that I would be saved and someday I can spend eternity in heaven with him. And if that's you today, you have yet to give your life to Jesus. But today you say, I, it's time for me to, to say yes to Jesus. It's time for me to stop running. It's time for me to stop playing games. And today I want to say yes to him. If that's you and you want to say yes to Jesus this morning, just as a, as a declaration saying that's me, I, I want to say yes to Jesus. I want to follow him. Would you just raise your hand so I can know who to pray for this morning? God, thank you for every hand that went up this morning. The celebration that's happening in heaven for lost people being found, for people who are stuck in their ways, declaring that you are Lord, coming back to a relationship with you. Jesus, we thank you for dying on the cross for us to cover our sins. We surrender to you today. Here we pray, amen. As I want to do, I'm going to invite the worship team just to begin to sing, and we're going to declare this song that we're going to build our life upon Jesus. And if you today want to decide that for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And today, if you want to decide that my family is going to be a godly family, that I want to be righteous and blameless, that I want to be obedient to God, that I want to have faith in God, I want to trust God, that, that today, if you're saying, man, I need to be someone of holy fear, I invite you to respond to saying, God, that's me. We want to have a godly family. God, I thank you for every person that's here this morning for every family represented, for every new family, for every future family, for every family that's been established. God, I pray that this would be a, a room of people that say, as for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. That this would be a room of people that say, I want to have a godly family. I wanna be a family that's found righteous and blameless before God. I wanna be a family that's obedient to God. I wanna be a family that has faith and trust God. And I wanna be a family that has holy fear. Today we respond saying yes to you, Jesus. We respond saying, that is me. In your name we pray, amen. If that's you, I invite you to respond now as we begin to sing.